Hi, I'm Alex, and I'm a PhD candidate from Pyle Pazner Lab in St. Petersburg. And today, I would like to present you our new genome assembly evaluation tool, which we named QuastLG. And let's start with a short introduction. As you know, genome DNA sequencing involves uh, cloning of a genome and then splitting into small fragments, which further can be computationally assembled uh, using special software into a genome sequence. But in the real world, uh, there are many different assemblers. Some of them we are present today. And uh, of course, there is a need to compare them with each other and uh, to find the best one for each particular study or data set. And there are various genome assembly evaluation tools. We can divide them into two large groups. One is DeNova tools, which are good for evaluating unsequenced algorithms, previously unsequenced organisms. And, but these tools usually compute only a few uh, quality metrics, while reference-based tools usually provide a comprehensive overview of assembly quality. And we will first focus on Quast tool, which is quite popular now in the genomic community. But it has a very important limitation. It was designed for bacteria assemblies and cannot handle large genomes. So what are the features of large genomes which should be considered in a new evaluation tool which uh, we developed? First of all, it's of course the size of such assemblies. Uh, they are huge, and so algorithms should be fast and memory efficient. Second, uh, these algorithms are usually complex and cannot be reconstructed uh, completely. Uh, so we need some realistic upper bounds on their uh, quality uh, because we cannot compare assembly quality with reference, finished reference quality. And uh, the last but not the least, uh, presence of transposons, which results in a large number of uh, differences between the reference genome and actually sequenced organism, and we need to distinguish these differences from real assembly errors. And in QuastLG, we solved all these problems and also added many new features and plots, which I hope will be useful. But since we are short on time, I will explain in details only a few of these features uh, and I encourage you to read our paper or visit our website for more details on the rest. And I will also briefly show performance of QuastLG and uh, examples of our new plots and how they can be used in genome assembly evaluation analysis. Let's start with the upper bound assembly concept. And there are two key reasons why uh, entire reference genome cannot be computationally reconstructed completely. First one is low coverage regions, in particular regions of zero coverage. And the second one is uh, long genomic repeats, which tangle assembly graphs and prevents their unambiguous uh, traversal. And our goal was to find the fragments of the reference that can be theoretically reconstructed by assembly uh, given a set of reads. So the input data for our algorithm are various types of reads and reference genome for a particular species. And uh, first we align reads to the reference uh, using BWA or Minimap depending on the reads type. And when it's done, we easily can find zero coverage regions, which will not be included in the upper bound assembly. Also, we find long genomic repeats using red de novo repeat finder and mark them in the reference. Uh, when it's done, we can split reference by zero coverage regions and by repeats and uh, end up with what we call upper bound context. But this context can further be enlarged and connected with each other by long reads or made pairs. So we uh, do this connection and uh, get upper bound scaffolds or simply upper bound assembly. And note that uh, gaps between contexts uh, can be filled either with uh, undefined nucleotides, uh, even if this gap was caused by coverage gap, uh, drop or by uh, reference sequence Otherwise, we also add uh, unresolved repeats as a separate uh, scaffolds. Uh, 
that's all for about uh, upper bound assembly and let's move to our new group of metrics which we called k-mirror based metric. Uh, k-mirror is simply a sequence of lengths k and we call uh, k-mirror unique if it's present only in a single copy in a genome. And if k is sufficiently large, uh, such unique k-mirrors are widespread in eukaryotic genomes. Uh, Quastalg identifies uh, k-mirrors using KMC3 software and use information about presence of these k-mirrors and their location to compute k-mirror-based completeness and correctness. Uh, k-mirror-based completeness is simply a percent of the reference k-mirrors present in the assembly. Note that some k-mirrors may be missing uh, because they are located in unassembled regions, and some k-mirrors uh, may be missing because of mismatches or indels. So this metric combines actually two inside. Uh, one is simply a genome fraction, which is percent of uh, assembled genome, and pure base quality. So it's good if you are aware about both parameters and want to see them in a single number. But uh, there is a drawback of this and other KMR based metrics. They are affected by the density of SNPs for the particular species and individual. And this problem can be partially solved by using a proper KMR size, and we have some recommendations about this in the paper and in our manual. And second uh, is the uh, KMR based correctness. And to compute it, we locate so-called KMR markers, uh, which is a, simply a list of consecutive KMRs shared between reference and uh, assembly and having uh, the same or real, uh, very similar relative distances in the both sequences. So on this, in this figure, you may see two K-mirrors, one is blue and one is orange. And to say that uh, a quantic or scaffold contains a K-mirror misjoin if it has two markers related to different chromosomes of the reference or having large inconsistency in their uh, relative distance in reference and in the quantic. So, for example, in this case, uh, there is a KMR misjoin between these markers. And benefit of this metric, uh, comparing to classic uh, misassemblies, is that it's resistant to transposons because transposons are repeated sequences and there is no unique KMRs in them. So, here I mean by KMR, I mean always unique KMR. And let's move to results. Uh, here is a performance of uh, Quast LG comparing to traditional Quast. And we benchmarked our tool on six uh, different data sets ranging from East to the human genome. And you may see that uh, even for relatively large worm and fruit fly genomes, uh, speed, up is, speed up is, uh, is very uh, good. And uh, moreover, uh, Quast LG was able to process human genomes in just a four hours on a regular server, while Quast 4.5 uh, failed to do this at all. And uh, this was uh, when we consider only regular metrics computed by both tools. And if we add new metrics, like the ones I described uh, just before, uh, of course, time increase, uh, increases, but uh, uh, this is mostly because of upper bound assembly, which includes alignment of a huge number of uh, reads to the reference, and the good news is that you need to do this upper bound assembly only once per data set, and then we, you can reuse this upper bound uh, as many times as you want. And here's a short fragment of uh, Quast uh, report on two human data sets. You may find full table in our paper and online. And uh, here also upper bound and reference statistics are present. And let's start with continuity uh, metrics, which are present by NJ50 and LJ50, where NJ50 is our adaptation of common and well-known N50, and while when all assemblies are broken at misassembly events. And LJ50 is simply the number of contexts larger than NJ50. And you may see that upper bound uh, provide uh, more realistic uh, limits on the, this uh, matrix quality. And uh, you may see that uh, real assemblies are rather close to it in contrast to reference HD 
38 stats, which are way uh, more large and unachievable. And when we switch to completeness, here regular completeness is simply a genome fraction. You may see that chimera-based value is uh, highly correlated with uh, regular statistics, and some drop of about 5 to 10 percent is caused by the density of SNPs in, uh, in the human genome. But uh, there is an important uh, exception of this rule. Uh, it's fly assembly, which has just above 25 percent chimera-based completeness. And there is a simple explanation of it. That, uh, fly assembler is the only one among these that uh, use only long reads for assembly and doesn't use short Illumina reads for polishing. And we know that long reads are uh, not of good quality, I mean per base quality. So chimera-based uh, metric shows this well. And finally, uh, correctness stats. Uh, here, regular is simply a number of misassemblers. And you may see that in three cases, these numbers are pretty similar. And in three cases, uh, they're completely different. And let's find out what's the reason in each case. For example, for SOP de Nova, you may see, uh, based on NJ50 and LJ50, that this assembly is rather fragmented and its uh, scaffolds are pretty short, so there is no much uh, scaffolds containing enough chimeras and chimer markers to produce chimera-based misassemblies. Uh, the second example is, again, fly, and uh, as we know uh, now, it has not much unique chimeras uh, present in reference, so again, there is no chance to get a lot of chimera-based misjoints. And finally, Mazurka is the third case, and it has pretty large scaffolds, and uh, they're of good quality. So this may mean that these 13,000 misassemblies are not as bad as it may seem from the first glance, and they are located in short scaffolds. And to show this, I will introduce feature response curve plot, where feature is simply the number of misassemblies, and y-axis value show uh, genome coverage of all contexts or scaffolds uh, containing at most X uh, features, or in this case, misassemblies. And if you look at two points on this plot, one is uh, related to the smallest number of misassemblies among three competitors, its fly number, and another point is related to 13,000 misassemblies of Mazurka, you may see that Almost all 13,000 misassemblies are located in contexts uh, summing up to less than 2% of genome coverage. So most of the uh, largest contexts contain just a few misassemblies, not, not, not more than kernel and fly do. So Mazurka is better if we just skip all short contexts. And using QuastLG, we can even find out where these misassemblies are mostly located. And for doing this, we introduce uh, circus plots, which are made using Icarus and circus software. And if you zoom in uh, to some fragment, you may, find, uh, you may see uh, green uh, boxes are correct context and red ones uh, context or scaffolds with misassemblies, and there is uh, a lot of uh, uh, short and misassembled context in Syntromere, which was even not assembled by Fly and Kenu. So uh, you may decide what is, what is better in this case to report nothing like Fly and Kenu or repo report something and try to assemble ha hardly assembled region. And uh, this is uh, all I want to demonstrate now. And to sum up, QuastLG is uh, used in the same uh, code base as Quast, so it benefits of all uh, Quast uh, features, and it can handle large genomes now. And I would like to thank uh, my teammates, and especially Alla, who did most of the coding, actually. And uh, she is here today and will present our poster tonight and also Hen, Canton, and Sean for uh, fruitful discussions and help. And actually, our discussion with Sean last year on SMB uh, led to appearance of QuastLG. 
and all Quest users for their feedback and feature requests, which help us to improve the software and my finding sources. And thank you all for your kind attention and visit our poster tonight and our website. Thank you. Hi. So, so just to clarify with the Mazurka assembly, you're saying that the, amongst the larger contigs, those are pretty accurate, but it had a, a sort of a long tail of really short contigs, and those were really inaccurate? Uh, actually, uh, they're probably not inaccurate because centromeres is hard to assemble, and probably uh, it was present in the reference genome is, uh, what, what is in reference genome is not uh, as correct as it may seem. So Mazurka may be assembled something different and we report it as a misassemblies because of the reference issue.